This is Delhi. Please stand by for our next program. This is All India Radio. In our national program of talks tonight, we bring you a panel discussion entitled In a League of Their Own. The panelists include Sam Virinder Singh, educator and founder of the Pardada Pardadi Educational Society, Ashish Dabral, educator and founder of Shri Timli Vidya Peet, and Naveen K. Gupta of All India Radio Delhi, who initiates and moderates the discussion. In our national program of talks tonight, I have two gentlemen with me in the studios who have been innovative educators to say the least. They also have been reformers in their respective areas of work. They are also at the extreme ends of the age spectrum. One is a young man, one is an octogenarian. I have Sam Virinder Singh. Mr. Sam Singh, welcome to the studios of All India Radio. Thank you, sir. And I also have Ashish Dabral with me. Ashish, welcome to the studios of All India Radio. Thanks, Naminji. I'll start with uh, Mr. Sam Singh. You had retired, had two daughters who were well settled, and you were in Washington, living a life of affluence. And suddenly you decided to come to India. That too, come to a place called Bichola in uh, in Bulenshahar, which is not to say one of the best places to come to from Washington. And you wanted to start a school there. Tell us about your journey. Well, the uh, journey was not very pleasant. First of all, uh, my wife was against the idea. Mm -hmm. She thought that I will just waste the time and waste the money and will become a joke. Mm. And she will be target of all the jokes. Anyway, by then, my elder daughter has grown up and, and became a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So... I asked her if she can talk with the mom and convince her. And she was able to do that. And so I came here and I honestly thought that I knew India. I was born in India. I lived here till the age of 30. And so I thought that I know India very well. You came to establish a school here yeah. with 1.7 million US dollars yeah. and 300 acres of your ancestral land. Yes. Huge amount of money you were dedicating to a cause. Why? I kept doing pretty good in the company and reached to the board level. Mm -hmm. When I was in the board level, then I met all these smart people who made the company the largest chemical company of the world. And then I realized that it's not by chance the people really do good things and create a good things, you know, like my company where I was working. Mm. Okay. So when I started rubbing shoulders with them, some of them started telling me, Sam, U.S. needs you. You're doing very well here. We really love to have you here. But India needs you more than we need you here. After a while, I also started thinking that maybe it is a good idea that I pass the wisdom, what I learned, the experience I had working in the largest chemical company, and indeed go back and do something in the direction of making the quality of life a little better. So I talked with my wife, who, as I said before, uh, was absolutely against it. You came uh, with a mission of what? What wanted, you came to do here? I wanted every girl child to become financially independent because I felt one of the reasons India is what India is, is because the mistreatment of what we call fair sex. And I thought, Minimum 50% of the population, if we can somehow mm. make a difference in that population, mm. then India will be on the road of becoming financially independent themselves. Ashish, you were a young techie. You were having a family. And suddenly you also heard to a call, you know, you wanted to revive your great-grandfather's Sanskrit Patshala, which was once a center of excellence. Right. Tell us that story. I was born and brought up in uh, that small village called Timli in Porikadwal of Uttarakhand. So I studied my basic education there. Mm. Uh, did my schooling from a small town called uh, Kordwara. That's again in, in Porikadwal. I've heard about my great-grandparents, what they have done and all the books that uh, they have written and the work they have done basically in their lifetime. That was there in our home, in the old boxes that were, the, I mean, you know, they were stored there safely. So I've gone through them, but I was not 
you know at that time i was not uh, that much aware of uh, the work that they have done but after that i have started my own i mean struggle uh, for a career or to establish myself somewhere and uh, i think after 7 8 years when i realized that i am in a in a better position uh, financially or socially as well then i visited my hometown again my village again after say around 9 years or so and then i realized that uh, it's time to do you know to do something back for my village basically I haven't done anything new what I have done that or whatever I'm trying to do is to at least preserve whatever great grandparents did in that village mm-hmm. so the legacy they have the the wisdom that, that they have earned or the work that that they have done basically in that village I'm just trying to preserve that uh, so that at least the next generations can connect with them Mr Samsing uh, you came here and 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 you came here with a noble mission of establishing a school where girl child would receive education you must have faced a lot of difficulties in uh, reaching where you are today well by some difficulties don't explain <laughs> what indeed we had to go through i had hired a guy indian guy from kerala and uh, we announced that we were going to start a school and i was living i had not completely moved uh, i was in singapore so i used to call mr jose every week and he says sir nobody has come for admission mm-hmm. I thought because he's from Kerala he doesn't know our area so I decided to come to the village and I myself will see it. Mm-hmm. Well I spent 2 weeks and actually nobody came. Mm. So I decided that I will go to the villages and find out what's going on and explain to people that what we want to do. So one day I ran into a lady mm-hmm. and she said to me Babuji I want to talk with you. So she sat down with me and she said Where did you get this idea we need a education? Mm-hmm. You see my daughter she is 10 year old and if not 3 years maximum 4 years I have to get her married. Mm. And we have zero money at our home. Aaj raat ko khana banega ya nahi we are not sure because her father comes drunk every night. Us mahol mein hum reh rahe hain. To aapko ye idea kahan se aa gaya? कि हमें पढ़ाई की जरूरत है वेल एज यू नो वेरी वेल आई एम इंडस्ट्री गाय आई हैव वर्क इन द इंडस्ट्री एंड इन इंडस्ट्री यू डू नथिंग बट सॉल्व इशू सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम सो आई टुक दैट एज अ चैलेंज आई सेड लेट मी थिंक अबाउट इट एंड आई कैलकुलेटेड आई सेड इफ आई गिव देम फूड इफ द आई गिव देम क्लोदिंग एंड सम हाउ आई डिपॉजिट इनफ मनी दैट द गर्ल वन शी बिकम थर्टीन फोर्टीन ईयर ओल्ड because at that age they get married there then they should have enough money to get her married mm. if i do those three things which is the three needs she told me mm. then maybe she will allow girl to come and have an education so i called her and i went to her uh, home and i told her this is what i will do with, with you i'll give you three meal i'll give you clothes a school dress two pair one pair of shoes sweater and all that and i will deposit 10 rupees per day in your daughter's account which in 4 years will be about 40000 rupees and jab wo 13 14 saal ki hogi you want to get her married then barat will come at the school i will feed the barat here in the school and with that 40000 you can do the kanyada that's the deal i gave her well she came and she sent her daughter but she was convinced that maybe two days he will give three days he will give and more girls started coming because nobody believe anybody is so stupid enough mm-hmm. that will keep feeding and clothe and all that and on top of that will give 10 rupees you know 3 4 or more joy within 3 weeks we had 45 girls after a while one month goes two months goes some of the girls started saying sir we sit here whole day nothing to do why don't you give us something to do so i hired two retired teacher and asked them to teach them how they can write their name i hired one teacher said teach them something about embroidery or something so they started doing that 6 8 9 10 months ago mm. i found out that in india you can give a exam as a private you do not have to go to school mm-hmm. so private exam diya 45 mein se 14 pass ho gaye mm. Yes, a huge success rate. <laughs> yes. So we convinced them to continue. Two years go by, and uh, I was told that uh, twelfth grade will be accepted. Mm-hmm. Private. Out of fourteen, four pass. 
12th grade also. Mm -hmm. So imagine from 45 now, four I have mm. who have passed the 12th grade. In three years, they did a, did a diploma in IIT and all four got a job. Wow. It took me three years. With that success, I had literally hundreds standing outside now. And that's how we started. Mm -hmm. And today, we have completed 20 years. Mm -hmm. In 20 years, we have more than 2,000 students. Mm -hmm. We have 141 girls in different universities of India mm -hmm. and five of them in the U.S. Out of those, 112 are actually employed in different IT companies mm -hmm. in India and three of them in the U.S. Wow. Ashish, uh, like Mr. Sam Singh, who has taken 20 years to reach where he mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. What were your baby steps in your field? Uh, Navinji, I always wanted to start or revive that uh, that Sanskrit Gurukul that was there uh, mm. in that village, basically. But I realized that if I'll start with that directly, then it will be a big failure, basically, because nobody in today's world uh, will send their children to a Sanskrit school because they don't see any future there. Because employability is the main criteria of success in, in, in today's world. So, so Even I, Mr. Samsung yeah, made uh, absolutely, employability absolutely, a great absolutely, criteria, and that's, that's what attracted the girls. To absolutely. Do. That is how people uh, get attracted, because when once those four girls got employment, I think, you know... They became people, a beacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, I started with a small computer center there in my village, uh, where I started giving free computer education to the students of mm -hmm. the government schools. Mm -hmm. Computer it's common to both of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's right. common to a job. Yeah. <laughs> if you need a job, you better know that. Yeah. Absolutely. But right now, a few of them are, you know, doing their own own work uh, in different organizations. They are not in a better companies, but uh, they are, I mean, self-reliant uh, uh -huh. as of now. And uh, then I started a primary school uh, there. Okay. All this is being funded how? Uh, yeah, it's self-funded. Self-funded. Self okay. Like I've said, that few friends are there who, you know, occasionally support, but otherwise it is self-funded. Uh -huh. Like the teacher's salary and everything. It's all uh, the, the salary that I'm getting, I'm mm -hmm. investing there. And uh, your father also contributed? Yeah, absolutely. From he, his pension? Right. So um, my whole family lives in that village and we all are uh, living the purpose, basically. And then you started a primary school. That's correct. And uh, before uh, the COVID, uh, basically, we were having around 30 students in that school. <coughs> 30 is not a big uh, number, but if we uh, talk about the geography and uh, the village, basically, uh, mm. where the government schools have just two to three students, we were having around 30 students at that place. So, you know, because the situation is easing now, so we have started that school again. Uh, mm -hmm. And around uh, 15, 15 students are uh, enrolled again into that school. During the lockdown, I also started the construction work for the boarding school uh, that I was uh, aiming to build. Around 20 students can can stay there now. I just wanted to add one more thing here, Vaisab, uh, because if we are working in a village, so we... We just don't work with the students. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we need to work with their, their parents as well. Like mm -hmm. Sam said that, you know, we need to first explain to their parents, like what is the idea and how it is going to impact their family. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need that to... That mother opened his eyes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Similarly, in, in Uttarakhand also, in those villages, we need to, you know, first uh, understand the parents. We need to make them understand what we are trying to achieve. And also we are trying to make some options for them uh, for the livelihood because of the difficult geographical uh, uh, terrain. People are migrating from, from those villages. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to to the cities basically for uh, lack know. of employment. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So we are trying to uh, build that as well. Uh, so in, during the lockdown, um, we have started a goshala there. We are trying to preserve the indigenous cow, which is badri, uh, the Himalayan okay. cow. Okay. So um, uh, that's g uh, the ghee of that cow, which, which is of eight category. So we are selling that online, which is we are selling around two thousand rupees a kilo, which is a good money basically. Good price. Yeah, yeah, right. You're also involved with the women of uh, Timli in uh, right. m uh, in harvesting as well. As, uh, Absolutely. So we have started organic farming in that village, and uh, now the more people are from the near nearby villages are you know uh, started doing that. So we have started a small processing unit of spices, the Himalayan spices, um, the turmeric, red chili, mm -hmm. and coriander. So we are processing them in the village, and that is also generating some employment for the young people. Uh, I mean, during the lockdown, so many uh, young uh, persons came back to the village, mm -hmm. and they are now working with me there. So. Mr. Samsung, uh, the you also have. Uh, uh, three centers, I believe, uh, where you do marketing of your uh, handicrafts. Yeah, we do uh, handicraft. Uh, we migrated from our students to their mom and their bhavis and their chachis and all that. Mm -hmm. We started with the girls. Today, no girl goes to textile. Mm -hmm. Only their mom and bhavis and elder sisters 
who didn't get the opportunity to go to school, mm -hmm. they go to the textile. Now, fortunately, we get large orders from corporations mm -hmm. and we supply them, you know, and they market it. Okay. So we directly not marketing, but we get the orders. You know. I have two divisions. One is a textile division, other is a milk division because our area, mm -hmm. uh, after uh, Punjab, we are the second highest milk producer in India, you know. Mm -hmm. So self-help group, I have right now 5,000 mothers mm -hmm. because uh, those 2,000 girls I have, their mothers and babies and all that. So that's a, approximately 5,000 and they are in milk business. Okay. And we are the one who facilitate their milk business, you know. We brought mother dairy there to buy their milk. Okay. And uh, the deal is that I, the Pardada Pardadi, buy the milk from them. And Pardada Pardadi Educational society. society. The girls go to school, obviously, and get a job. They're family members. We help them two ways. The milk business or the textile business is done through Pardada Pardadi Educational Society. Ashish, uh, how did you find the involvement of the local populace as Mr. Samsung faced initially a lot of hurdles. Did you find a local population warming up to your ideas? Well, I would say the situation is uh, the same in all uh, the regions. If you talk about the rural India, basically, if we start something new or if we come up with some different idea in a place, I don't think people take that, you know, very well. Unless you link it with their job, unless yes. you link it with life. I mean, you. yeah, ab absolutely. We need to link it with some benefits related to them. Then only they will relate it with themselves. Because, I mean, I have realized that even if you are doing something good, I mean, their mindset it is because the, the, the environment is like that. that they mm -hmm. will think that, you know, this person is getting some benefit from somewhere else or mm -hmm. maybe because they have experienced that you know throughout their plus life. you being from the city you being from another country yeah that yeah, two yeah, of yeah. us of a you know they treat you with as, suspicion yeah right. mm, that's it i'm asking you this question because mm -hmm. of one fact mm -hmm. mr samsung had a decent amount of money as well as resources to back him up right. you started out on a small scale so uh i would say that uh, dejection would have come to you far more quickly than mr samsung uh, right. I mean, I would say uh, the money, the amount of money that we have that I think doesn't make any difference. But, but when we are doing some work on the ground level, the difficulty level will be the same, I, I believe, because we are dealing with the same mindset of the people. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they, Do you agree, Mr. Samson? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Nobody will believe that you're doing it for their good. <laughs> I would say, I mean, uh, what Sam said that I would say that, you know, because uh, there are very few examples in our society, like where people are doing something good, basically out of their pocket, like he earned throughout his life. And then he decided to put that money for the society. I mean, there are very few examples uh, like that in our society. And because there are no such examples around us, uh, nobody believes like, you know, that somebody is going to do uh, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. So definitely that kind of challenge is there. But if the purpose is clear, then I don't think there will be. One of your biggest successes was involving your students with World Robotics uh, to, Conference. Uh, like I have said that uh, the Vedic school, that uh, that is the vision that is there in my mind, basically, that is basically to give them Vedic education and at the same time give them the modern science and technology, uh, the exposure of the modern science and technology as well. So uh, the reason behind that is we can teach people like how to work on a computer, how to earn money. That is that is fine. I mean, that is the primary objective of, you know, to sustain. But I think we should also teach people like what is the purpose of life, why we are here. Basically, we need to learn the values. I mean, we can train our brain, but we need to also think about our heart, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which makes us human. So I think we need to uh, think about that direction also. The current education system is only training the brain. I think that is because of the in industrial uh, phase when, when it was there. Mm. Uh, the education system uh, was designed because of, uh, you know, based on that industrial requirement i mean it's 200 years old and uh, i mean still today we are teaching uh, students uh, we are making them machines basically mm. the kind of education system is there uh, i think we need to think about the future and uh, you know the machines will be more intelligent than than humans in in, in coming coming years mm. uh, but i think we need to make humans more human more humans absolutely mm. i mean they need to understand what they are mm. they are not machines and uh, that is what what we you know uh, kind of thing i'm trying to do there mm. so it's it's modern education plus the vedic concepts where we know about ourselves our purpose of life that should be in the core of uh, ourselves basically so uh, definitely like you have said that there were uh, two events one is like uh, with uh, with the education we are teaching them robotics as well mm. we are teaching them computer programming uh, coding mm. as well the ai uh, there are a few friends who are you know helping me in that so that 
portion is there and uh, there was uh, we were fortunate enough that there was an incident we applied for it and uh, the students from our, from our village or our our school mm. uh, they had direct conversation with uh, an ast- astronaut in uh, international space station I so know. that was a, a yeah. great achievement for them yeah. basically young ashish uh, mrs samsing says uh, make humans more humans you started building toilets for your girl students when we started obviously there were no toilets anybody's home and when these girls came they had nice toilets in the school mm. that taught us why not we build toilets in every girl's home because every girl had that problem mm. so we started that as an as an objective and today uh, as i told you that we have more than 2500 girls and all of them have a toilet now and that is a matter of respect for the other sex and the girls feel proud mm. that they do not have to go out in the fields guys making a joke of them mm. you know so they're proud of it ashish uh, what are the future prospects that are challenging you right now well lavinji uh, like i've said that i'm moving very slow because of the limited resources that that i have but i think the progress is going on in f- next few years i think you know uh, the plan is to to develop a vedic gurukul there where mm-hmm. students will be there around say 40 to 50 uh, students will be there and they will be learning the vedic education like i've said about their themselves plus the modern uh, latest science and technology as well that is one part and the second thing is uh, to give them a holistic environment in that village where we have a goshala we have basically a meditation and a yoga center mm-hmm. where we have the organic farming so that you know the students those who are living there they are learning new things in their life mm-hmm. also they are getting connected with the environment you drive every friday Well, to uh, Timli. Yeah, yeah. Before the lockdown, yeah. you were doing it for a number of years. You were driving to Timli every Friday and coming back after spending two days there and coming back on Sunday evening and then going back to your job on Monday. Right. Year in, year out, you kept on doing it. What, right. what made you do this? It just started like like I've said that I was started a small computer center there and mm. I, I wasn't able to find a teacher there because there was nobody to teach a uh, computer to the students of that place. I went to nearby towns as well uh, like Kordwara or Rishikesh. I went to a few computer centers there. I asked the teacher to, you know, I wanted to hire them for that particular place but nobody was ready to go to that uh, that area mm. because it's in the mountain and nobody want to even if I wa- I offered them the same salary that they were getting in Rishikesh or or, or co- in Kordwara. When I was out of resources there then um, I thought uh, let me uh, start start going to the village on a weekend and i started training a few students there by myself and uh, for two days i was staying them them and then i said i asked them to you know uh, repeat the same thing for next five days to the students that is how it started and uh, and then it became a habit and you mr sam singh go only two months in a year to your wife and daughter Yeah. and you've been doing this for 20 years yeah, yeah, yeah. don't don't you miss them don't you miss the comfortable life you left behind to come here I'm just asking you this yeah. because for a man to come back here after living there for decades and live in a village although it's your paternal village it's your ancestral village but leaving behind his family it must be tough no no it is tough there's no question about it so I'm not going to say it's not a tough thing you know not only leaving a family behind but you are sort of a joke even in india mm. you are a joke do char saal karega pagal hai wapas chala jayega that kind of thing because who the hell wants to live in the village when i came 20 years ago mm. there was no phone there was no electricity mm. and my daughter asked me dad what is the one thing you miss mm. and i said ice she said ice what do you mean by ice so she said i will send you ice maker i said you will send ice maker but where the electricity will come mm. <laughs> you know so we had none of those so we went through i really admire ashish what he is doing and what he is going through but imagine 20 years ago in the villages of anupshahar when there was no electricity there no transportation no nothing and you have to start that you know and uh, the experience i went through because uh, you know very well that i was attacked uh, by guns and all that mm-hmm. because everybody thought there has to be something you know mm. and i went through all that you know mm. and obviously my wife and my daughters were concerned about why are you doing all that and getting shot and my car had no space left where the shots were not fired at mm. you know and so i went through all that experience you know but there is something i decided to do it because for 40 years living in us as a indian i felt insulted mm. 
for that reason, future generations, mm. like the young man sitting here, Ashish, that he goes to U.S. and he's respected because what India has achieved. Mm. That was my mission. And that is remains. And you have achieved it. Even you have you have sent five girls to U.S. That's a that, that's a big. Up till now, my mission was every girl should get a job. Mm -hmm. So now my mission is how to increase the numbers. So the thing is, I'm at two thousand. I have decided I'm going to go to ten thousand in next five years. I try to find out why universities have sixty, seventy, eighty thousand students and primary schools don't. Mm. I thought maybe there is a law. I found out there is no law. So, with the help of people like you, communicating and those who are listening, with their help, we want to know how we can go to eighty thousand, ninety thousand, one lakh students, mm. just like a university, and tie up with the large corporations and send them uh, so that they have jobs. Because our mission remains: every lady should be financially independent. Maybe you can pass some of your tips to young Ashish here, and he can. Oh, no, no, I am so proud of Ashish. Ashish. You know, I honestly am so proud because I am not doing yoga. I am not doing gaushala. All those are Indian values, mm -hmm. which uh, we all value and wish we can do it. You know, I mean, I honestly wish I can do what Ashish is doing, mm -hmm. but I am too old to start those kind of things now. But I am proud of it, and will definitely talk to my daughters about what Ashish is doing. Ashish, you are in your late thirties. What keeps you going? Why can't you have a laid-back, nice urban lifestyle? What keeps on driving you to do this? Right, what you're uh, doing? Navinji, I would like I've said that I was born in that village. I have, you know, something is there in my DNA. That is another part. And I started my career with a shop. It was without any salary for a few months, and then I did some computer certification, and that is how I started my career. And in next three years, I was in Saudi Arabia uh, in a good company, in an oil and gas company, and I was, you know, having a, a car, a good place to live, mm -hmm. and I have experienced the luxury. You know, I have traveled the distance from nowhere to a good job in next in just three years, and. In those three years, I've experienced that this is not the purpose of life. Like, I mean, you know, people live their whole life to achieve these things, to get a good flat or many cars or whatever is there. I mean, the materialistic thing that may give you satisfaction for up to a certain level, but that is not the purpose of life. So I came back from there, from Saudi Arabia, and then I started. And you listen to your calling. Absolutely. I mean, this is like I've said, this is in the DNA and I'm just following that. Mr. Samsung, you're 81. You should be man sitting at home, you know, watching your grandchildren and, you know, just relaxing. You no, are here <laughs> in middle of, you know, a place called Anoop Shah. Yeah. And day in, day out, you are trying to make this a better place for the girl student. Yeah. What keeps you driving? I told you that uh, that 40 years of insult living U.S. and being an Indian and India doing a lot of good things. But unfortunately, poverty was forcing us to do wrong things also. Mm. And uh, when you go as an Indian, no matter who you are, you are a citizen of that country where these kind of things are happening, mm -hmm. you know. And so that insult was not easy for 40 years, you know. And so I want to make sure that uh, my two daughters and my four grandkids, you know, now, they and young people like Ashish sitting next to me, us, when they go to U.S., they don't have to go through what I went through. So that's the thing, which uh, I get up every morning and look forward doing what I'm doing and enjoy doing it, you know. I wish both of you, Mr. Samsung and Ashish Dabral, great power and success in your future missions. I can think of only one word when I meet people like you, dauntless. Thank you very much. Thanks, Navinji and Sam. Thank you, Naveen. Thank you so much. In our national program of talks tonight, you just heard a panel discussion entitled In a League of Their Own. The panelists included Sam Virender Singh, educator and founder of the Pardada Pardadi Educational Society, Ashish Dabral, educator and founder of Sri Timli Vidya Peet, and Naveen K. Gupta of All India Radio Delhi, who initiated and moderated the discussion. Produced and presented by Naveen K. Gupta, this program came to you from the Delhi station of All India Radio.